Good day everyone and welcome to this guide where I'll explain you all the best ways to Zerg bomb in PvP. This can be especially useful now with the White Strikes Mayhem event going on, but also outside of that, bombing is a nice way to spend your time in PvP as it makes for some really nice clips for a content creator point of view and from a gameplay point of view it's a very effective build to clear out large enemy groups. I'll present builds for different classes and methods for bombing, as well as gameplay and combo tips that will be helpful if you want to pick up a bombing setup as well. All the builds are per usual on the website as well, in their respective class pages. These builds are also different playstyles, each with some benefits and drawbacks. And to help you decide which build or playstyle is best for you, I'll make sure to compare the strengths and weaknesses and rate them a little bit on effectiveness. I'll be showcasing some gameplay clips during the presentation of the builds as well, so you can see how it works and so I can explain the combos for each of those builds. Next to that, I'll also give you some auxiliary tips on the best locations to bomb, how to decide when exactly to bomb, and things like that. So, with that out of the way, let me get into the builds. And first, I have to mention the classic Nightblade bombing builds, which were the first bombing builds ever created, and that still function to this day. It's one of the easiest builds as well, although it can be argued that no bombing build will be difficult since it usually takes only a day or two to learn a combo and then you're good to go. So this classic Nightblade bombing build, the gear for this build is 5 pieces of War Maiden, 5 pieces of Vicious Death in combination with Balorg and then on the back bar a Seducer bow, just for the 2 piece. Vicious Death, obviously, you want to have that for the chain reaction. War Maiden is an optional set here, it's a placeholder. It can also be different things. Mechanical Acuity is a good alternative, but I'll go more over that when I get to the skills, because it ties into that as well. For the traits, I've gone with Full Divines. I'm just pushing damage on this build, because you're not really intending to tank anything at all. You simply stay in stealth for 90% of the time, and then come out of stealth shortly to do a bomb, and then you run away again. The traits on the jewelry are infused, and then the traits on the weapon are none honed and precise on the front bar, and on the back bar, the bow the seducer here, I have decisive. To quickly explain why I've went with a bow here, basically I want to have a ranged weapon on the back bar to be able to do ranged light attacks for ultimate generation. That's also why I've gone with decisive, just to get more ultimate. There's nothing else really that you can benefit from from the back bar, because you just use this to cast your buffs. The reason I've gone with the bow is because during and after a bomb, if I roll dodge I get Major Expedition, which helps me to get out of the fight afterwards, and in between fights it just helps me to move around a bit more, where I can do a roll dodge and sprint for a bit, which can also work neatly with the Vampire Sneak passive when you sprint for 4 seconds. For the enchants on the front bar here, I've gone with the Sorcery Draining Poison. Basically it's going to give me minus Sorcery, or at least it will have a chance to give me minus Sorcery. And that is a nice damage buff to have if it procs. Enchantments are not really useful here because they are just a single target, while everything here is AoE. So you don't really benefit much from a single target debuff. It's better to have a buff on yourself, even if it's just a chance. On the jewelry, of course, you want to have the spell damage enchants with spell damage, weapon damage, and magic recovery. And on the gear, I've gone with full magic enchants. Then for the skills, on the front bar, I have concealed weapon, inner light, power extraction, camouflaged hunter, lotus fan, and soul tether. And on the back bar, I have shadowy disguise, channel acceleration, proximity detonation, healthy offering, shadow image, and barrier. Starting off with the front bar here, the spam bull can be sap essence or power extraction. So you don't want to have the combination of warm maiden and power extraction as I've shown it here. I saw the power extraction just to show you the difference. Power extraction gives you minor courage on top of the same damage as sap essence which means you have a little bit more damage from this spam bull. But it also deals disease damage, so you can't use War Maiden with it. So if you want to use that, I recommend going with Mechanical Acuity, which is also a really good bombing set. Mechanical Acuity will give you a bunch of spell crit, and while you won't have the full 100% benefit from it, it will still give you several dozens of percentages in critical chance, which is a really nice buff, because the more critical chances you have, the more likely you are to kill Squishy and get the chain reaction going with Fish's Death. A third set option here would be Dagon's Dominion. That one would also work with power extraction and will definitely work just fine with this build too. These three set options I just mentioned don't really change the functionality of the build too much. Slotting one or the other doesn't really give a big buff. 
because the same drawbacks and benefits of this build still apply either way, and I'll go over that in a bit. Then also I have to mention Barrier here. I don't use this ultimate, it's just here from the sustained passive from the support skill line. Shadow Image is a nice skill on this build too, which allows it to escape after casting a bomb. For example, a really good place to bomb with this build is the keep doors and walls while they are getting repaired. And if you put up a Shadow Image somewhere else and then run into the group that is repairing a door or a wall, bomb them and then teleport back afterwards, you have a really clean bomb that also allows you to get away with ease and maybe bomb again afterwards again using the same method. Lotus Fan here, some people like to use the skill while going for a bomb as well. Personally, I don't because it's a big warning sign to people and it takes away the ability to bomb from stealth and have that instant burst from Soul Teller from stealth. But it can still work in case you timed your bomb wrongly and you are not yet in the enemy group and your proximity detonation is about to explode. Concealed Weapon 2 is not a skill I ever use, it's simply there to benefit from the unnamed 10% damage buff after leaving invisibility, which is a huge buff and definitely something you want to have on any kind of bombing or ganking build on the Nightblade. And all that means that the only skills you really actively use on the front bar are Power Extraction, Orsa Passants and Salt Tether, everything else I basically never press. Then for the champion points in the blue tree I have Master at Arms, Fighting Finesse, Deadly Aim and Backstabber. I am simply buffing the damage sources that I have with Mastered Arms and Deadly Aim, and since this build relies on crit, it's nice to have Fighting Finesse and Backstabber as well. Another good option is Wrathful Strikes, it will work just fine with that too. For the red CP, I have Celerity, Pain's Refuge, Rejuvenation and Boundless Vitality. I've chosen to go with this over the more classically used Survival Instincts and Sustained by Suffering because I am not really into combat much at all. And even Pain's Refuge, to be honest, can also be changed out for, for example, Fortified, in case you prefer that. Either way, the recipe do not matter that much beyond Celerity and Rejuvenation, in my opinion, because those two help you to move around and the others with extra survivability while in combat don't matter much since you are only in the fight for a few seconds. Then for the auxiliary stuff, so first I'll go over the stats here. 1.5k match recovery is enough to cloak around pretty easily. 25k health, this can be increased or decreased depending on how many points you have into health. You can see I have a fair amount. This simply helps to escape the fight and it also helps to not get one shot immediately if somebody discovers you in stealth by for example popping a detection potion. But I've also gone with 64 points into magicka here, which generally works just fine too, but you have to be a bit more on your toes then while moving around in an enemy keep. You'll see throughout the builds though that these attribute points are very flexible depending on the player. If you're a beginning player, I recommend going just with 64 points into health. It's a minor damage loss, but only a very minor one, and it will help you a little bit to move around since you're probably more prone to do a mistake every now and then. As you can see, the crit chance is pretty high at 40%, which is really nice to have for a bomb. And the crit damage here is at 46% unbuffed. On top of that, there will also be backstabber and race against time with the minor force. For the Mundus, I've gone with the shadow. Since the spell critical chance is so high already, I've chosen to push critical damage instead. For the food, I have Ghastly Eyeball, which is shown here as ice cream. The actual stats you can see here, the stats screen is still a bit bugged. But basically, I want to just boost my maximum magicka for more damage and magic recovery so I can cloak around easily. And I don't really care about stamina sustain or max health that much, which is why I prefer this food. And then lastly, for the uh, vampire, you want to have that in order to benefit from the extra damage that it offers. Now for the potions, on this build I use the immovability potions. You can easily use the Alliance Health Draught, which is going to give you health, invisibility and immovability. Or you can use any other potions that give immovability. So all of those that are listed here when I tap it in the search bar will work. The important part really is that ideally you get some part of magic recovery or stealth. It just helps to move around that way. But especially that you get the immovability effect. Because many people are going to use flare, fire rune and things like that while repairing a keep. Uh, or while on, stacking on a flag. And that is specifically aimed at also detecting bombers. And if you run into the enemy group and then you get stunned by fire rune, your bomb is failed and you will most likely die as well. So the immovability portion is a great way to counter that. As for the combo, you want to stand at range from the enemy, but still not too far. So you can get to them in about 6-7 to seven seconds of just normal running. 
This is to stay hidden, of course, and you don't want to run anyone when you cast Proximity Detonation. The first skill I always cast is Chance Acceleration. This is going to give me the Minor Force, Damage Buff, and Major Expedition. After that, I cast Proximity Detonation, and I start running towards the enemy. Right before I arrive into the enemy group, I use the Immovability Potion, and then a second before the proximity detonation, ideally then you arrive in the middle of the enemy group, be it on the flag that they are at, or the keep gate, or the wall. Then you bar swap, and you cast Salt Header right before the proxy explodes. And then ideally, you might also want to try get a Spammable in, so Power Extraction or Sap Essence, because that's going to give you major sorcery. That way everybody is stunned and you get the most amount of damage on your proximity detonation and ideally all of this happens in about two seconds and it basically sort of one shots the group most often you want to do two or three power extractions instead of one simply to get the people that haven't died just yet or in case nobody died yet to try and burst them down nonetheless but in case it doesn't work after casting it two or three times you want to disengage either way because if you are not successful killing anybody at that point, you are very unlikely to kill them either way by keeping on spamming power section because everybody will be moving away and everybody will be blocking and healing. Assuming that the bomb was successful though, after that second or third power extraction, you still want to disengage as fast as possible. And you can do that by swapping back to the bow bar again, doing a roll dodge or just immediately casting shadow image to be out of the enemy group and to maybe start a second bomb afterwards. As I mentioned, one of the main benefits of this build is that it's very straightforward and something that many people have already tried before. It also shines in locations where people are already stacking. So the prime examples being what I mentioned with resource flags, keep flags too, and main door repairs. The instant damage of this bomb is also decently high. In 1-2 to two seconds you can have everything hit at once. But you can still get more damage using other builds that I will go over in a bit. So if you hit a fitting group that hits nicely, you have a decent chance of succeeding, and that's where you want to use this build in. This ties nicely into the main drawback of this build, namely finding a fitting group and situation that's already stacked for you in a small area, and preferably standing still without any buffs on them. It limits this build to those situations I talked about. Very occasionally a moving group can be bombed as well with this, but you have to be lucky for that. So while this build is definitely still viable, and if you want to have an easy time bombing, this is a good way to go with it, it is not ideal due to not being the highest damage, and because it's a little bit niche in the situations you can use it in. And that immediately brings me to the Nightblade build that I currently consider the best for both damage and general applicability, which is Nightblade Carve Bombing. This is relatively new compared to the previous build, even though it's been going around for months or maybe even a year already. But it found a lot of success even through the tanky meta. So for the sets on this build, what I have is 5 pieces of Vicious Death again for the Chain Reaction in combination with 5 pieces of Dark Conversions. Dark Conversions is going to give you that pull effect that is really nice to have for bombing that you can then follow up on with spamming Carve or the Brawler Morph with the Master's Perfect Battle Axe. On the back part I have the Dark Conversions Ice Staff here. And then as a monster set, I have two pieces of Prior Tieric. This can also be a one-piece Mora's Whispers in combination with a one-piece Slime Crawl, simply boosting the critical chance you have. But I want to showcase both, and Prior Tieric definitely has a really cool effect as well. That is fun to fight with. For the traits, as before, I want to have full Divines, and for the Enchants, Magma Magica on the gear. On the Jewelry, I want to have Infused Spell Damage Enchants. On the front bar, I have the Sorcery Draining Poison, with a Nurn Honed Battle Axe, and on the back bar I have an Infused Berserk Enchant with the Ice Staff. I've gone with the Ice Staff because it allows me to block and heal a little bit as well, which is nice to have on a more brawling build. Not that this build is going to be out in a group or in the open much, but still I like to have a little bit of extra tankiness on this. On the front bar the Battle Axe is important because it's going to give you 12% crit damage, which is huge on a build that focuses on crit a lot already. And that is also immediately a reason why going with Mora's Whispers and the One Piece Slime Crow is a good idea as well. For the skills in this build, I have Phantasmal Escape, Brawler, Forward Momentum, Healthy Offering, Camouflage Hunter and Onslaught on the front bar. And then on the back bar, Shadowy Disguise, Channel Acceleration, Proximity Detonation, Concealed Weapon, Scalding Rune and Barrier. Barrier again for the Magicka Sustain from Magicka 8 over here. Scalding Rune, this is the skill that I'm going to use to proc Dark Conversions with, as you need an AoE for it. 
On top of that, it's also going to deal a little bit of flame damage in the AoE, which is a nice extra, because as it explodes, enemies are nicely stacked already in that small range. Here again, Concealed Weapon is purely for the damage buff. I go out of Cloak while on this bar, so that's why I've put it here. And then on the front bar. Phantasmal Escape is not a skill I actually use much, though it's definitely nice to keep it up just for the survivability, as it's a good skill for that. But the reason I use it is simply to have a benefit from the assassination ability here. Hemorrhage, that is going to increase your critical damage by 10%, and for which you need to have a skill from this skill line slotted. Then Brawler, this is your spam ball. This is the whole thing why this build works. This in combination with Master 2H. So the Master 2H is uncapped. So the more enemies you stack, the more damage you deal. And that's why this build works really well on large groups too. And your spam ball is going to deal an enormous amount of damage to the point where this alone sometimes is already enough to kill enemy groups. Then for momentum, I simply have this for the major sorcery and major brutality. I've gone with this over rally simply because it has a longer duration and I don't really care much about the healing since I have healthy offering anyway. And then Camouflage Hunter is just there for the buff. Onslaught is the ultimate I use here. Some people also like to use Soul Tether. It definitely gives a bit more survivability to have Soul Tether, but with Brawl you also get a big shield already. Plus Onslaught I do consider to be a lot more damage than Soul Tether for this build. And then one more thing about the skills is that instead of Scalding Rune, what you can also use is the Fighter's Guild Trap over here, um, the ranged one. That is also going to place an AoE and it's just going to proc tar conversions. But what that is going to do is that it's going to give you minor force as well, and then you can slot out Channeled Acceleration. And the reason you would want to do that is in case you want to have Shadow Image, which was present on the previous build, but not on this one. But it can greatly increase the possibility you have to escape the group you were bombing after doing a successful bomb. Anyway, then for the champion points, on the blue tree I have something similar as before, just Master at Arms, Fighting Finesse, Fighting Aura and Backstabber, and then Celerity, Pain's Refuge, Rejuvenation and Bandless Vitality, same thing. For the Auxiliary stuff, here it's also mostly the same thing. The points I made about the attribute points into health and magicka still count here the same as they count on any other build. And then as a Mundus, I do still advise the Shadow here since you can have a high crit chance if you want to, especially if you run Morris Whisper. Then Vampire and then just the food is different where here I have either Jewels of Misrules or Azorga's Milk Bear Haunch. I prefer the health and the magic and stamina regeneration more here, simply because this build does need to be able to brawl a little bit, just a little bit as well and you need a little bit more stamina sustain in order to easily cast port momentum and brawler a lot while i'm at it actually i didn't mention it before but this character is a high elf high elf works fine khajiit is also good to be honest any damage race is good for this then for the combo again you want to stand about six to seven seconds away not to alert any people then you cast channel acceleration and proxy detonation afterwards then you run into the enemy group, you pop the immovability potion right before you are into the group. This is all the same as the previous build. But then what's different is that here you want to do a light attack and then cast your AoE skill, be it Beast Trap or Fire Rune. And this is going to give you the boost from the Berserker enchant, which is a real nice damage boost to have. So it's important to do that light attack into the AoE skill, which you can then immediately pass up to the front bar. Then um, the AoE skill will proc Dark Conversions, and as enemies are then pulled in by Dark Conversions, you want to hit everybody with Onslaught. Onslaught is going to deal a huge burst to them, but it's also going to give you a lot of penetration. And this is then going to go neatly with Brawler, as this is the skill that will hit really hard and will benefit from all that penetration as well. All the enemies will still be stacked up by the Dark Conversions, and thus you will get a huge benefit from the Master 2H, and that's where the burst in this build comes from. The benefits of this build is that you have super high instant damage with the Onslaught and the uncapped Master 2H. As I said before, if you stack enough enemies, the Onslaught isn't even necessary sometimes just because of how well Master 2H works with Dark Conversions. Another great benefit of this build is that you stack your enemies yourself, which vastly increases the amount of situation you can use this build in to bomb. For example, with moving enemy groups where the previous Tether Bomb was more difficult to use in, this build will shine as well, as well as any other situations such as keep door repairs, keep assaults where everybody is sieging, things like that. 
The one thing it doesn't work in is when people are mounted. So for example, if a group is taking a resource and everybody is standing mounted already, then conversions won't pull them in and thus you cannot bomb them with this bomb and the previous bomb would be better. That aside though, this build has a lot more applicability and this fast applicability and high damage are the reasons that this build works the best in my opinion. So you'll also see me using this the most often. The use of Dark Conversions and Carve is also the template that can be used on most other classes. More about that later. I would say the two main drawbacks of this build is the relative complexity since it's just a little bit more complicated than the build before and the strict bar space. You really have to play around with your skills in order to get all the buffs, otherwise you might be missing out on something. And it doesn't really allow you to slot any auxiliary skills if, for example, you want to have another healing skill compared to the previous build. So, carve bombing is not only a good idea on Nightblade, but it can work on most other classes as well. Most prominently here is Dragonite, which offers a bombing setup that is tankier and works better in group, but has a little less damage and of course doesn't offer invisibility. I've played this carve build on Dragonite as well, that's the only other class I play at all, because I think Nightblade and Dragonite are the best classes for this. And Dragonite is still very good for bombing, even though it doesn't have invisibility and a little less damage. The damage is still high enough, and some bombing locations become harder to reach without invisibility, but there's still plenty of bombing locations left to have fun with this build, and where this build shines, sometimes even better than the Nightblade one. So to go over the build, the idea is the exact same as it was on Nightblade, but I have a little change in the sets. So still 5 pieces of Dark Conversions on the back bar, but now instead of Vicious Death I have Plague Break, because I have an easy way of applying Plague Break to everybody on Dragonite. And then instead of having a 2-piece Prior Theric or a Mora's Whispers, I've gone with Malakas Bound of Brutality. That's because DK doesn't really work that well with crit damage, it doesn't have anything like a crit chance bonus or a crit damage bonus like Nightblade or Arcanist for example has. So instead I've gone with non-crit damage all over and pushed that as high as possible, and that way it works as well. Even though I do think that even if you build the exact same way as on Nightblade, it will work fine too. I like this for the optimization. On the front bar, instead of a battle axe, I also have the Master's Grace Sword this time. It doesn't matter if it's perfected or not because you use Corrosive, so you don't really care about any extra penetration from the sets. On top of that, the Master's Great Sword, which gives weapon damage, is going to go really nicely with the Dragonite because it does have a specific minor brutality buff that is going to buff this a little bit more compared to maces and battle axes. The one piece monster set here that I have left because of Malakas Brutality is Baron Tursk. You can go and push damage with it by going for example with a one piece more like Kina. But I have gone with this because I like to play a little bit more of a brawler on this build, sometimes in group as well. And you don't have stealth, so having a little bit more sustain to just roll dodge and cast heals all the time helps a lot, which is why I've gone with this. For the enchants and the traits, I've gone with a mix of impenetrable and divines. This is just going to give me a mix of damage and survivability because I want to have a bombing build of course, but I also want to brawl with it. On the front bar I have the Nunhone trait, again goes nicely with the minor brutality from Dragonite. And the Ice Death of Dark Conversions is the same as on the Nightblade where I have an infused Berserker enchant. On the Jewelry I just have 3 infused weapon damage enchantments. Then for the skills, on the front bar I have Cauterize, Brawler, Rally, Deep Breath, Camouflage Hunter and Tonebreaker. And on the back bar I have Protective Plate, Eruption, Resolving Vigor, Coagulating Blood, Volatile Armor and Corrosive Armor. So just to explain a little bit, here Corrosive Armor is the main reason why Dragonite is really good for car bombing too, because it's going to make you super tanky and also give you a lot of extra damage that is going to work a bit the same as Onslaught, since it gives you a lot of penetration in the sense that you just completely ignore the enemy physical and spell resistance. You also have a lot of healing skills that I included, so there is here Resolving Vigor and Graduating Blood, and on the front bar I also placed Cauterize, simply to stay alive in between bombs and such. I've also gone with Rally over Forward Momentum here, since here I use stamina skills a bit more, and this is just yet another heal that can be a nice extra bit of burst healing every now and then. The skill I use to proc Dark Conversions with is Eruption. You can also still go with Fire Rune or Fight Skill Trap if you want to, but here I've just gone with that because it deals a little bit of extra flame damage to the enemy as well, and it's a decay skill, and it's going to be a nice snare. 
Protective Plate is the mobility skill, which also going to give me a lot of tankiness. You can also go with Trace Against Time for the mobility, but I don't really care about the Minor Force, so I've gone with Protective Plate instead, just to be able to tank in between bombs. On the front bar here, Deep Breath is the reason that I've gone with Plague Break here, because you can simply apply that to everybody with the skill, and that way you have this set working well too. Plus, after 2.5 seconds, you have a pretty big burst of about 10k flame damage on the tooltip here, to the enemies which will go nicely on top of the burst you have from Brawler. Now if you want to you can also change out one of the skills for proximity detonation to maximize your burst damage. Ideally probably you would want to change out Cauterize for proximity detonation and then you can time it up with the other skills with the Corrosive with the Brawler to explode right as your Dark Conversions procs as well. But in general, you don't need it, and I like just having the survivability and carving its own is a decay actually already enough to do most of the bombing. Then for the champion points, I have Focus Mending, Biting Aura, Master at Arms, and Wrathful Strikes. Here, instead of crit damage, I just push normal damage with normal CPs, and I have Focus Mending simply to be able to survive a little better too. On the red CP, I have Sustained by Suffering, Rejuvenation, Survival Instincts, and Pain's Refuge. Then for the Auxiliary stuff, I have a bit more into health for this build. You can also put all 64 points into health if you want to. Depends on how tanky you feel with sub or above 30k health. But when you also have Major Brutality, Minor Brutality, and the Berserker Enchant, you'll be looking at 6 to 5, maybe even 7k weapon damage. As the Mundus here, I have the Warrior. It works nicely with DK, and I don't really care about the Shadow for crit damage. Vampire, still, and then Jewels of Misrule, or Azorka's more Bear Horns, simply because I care about the health and the sustain a lot here, since I do want to be a bit more survivable than just a classic Nightblade bombing or ganking build. Here, I have to survive in between the bombs as well. The potions here, again, are the same. You want to have some kind of immovability potion to be able to run into the group and to bomb without being interrupted or CC'd. As for the combo, similarly to on Nightblade, you want to stack enemies up with conversions and then just spam carve into them. So if you have channel acceleration, you want to keep that active for minor force. In any case, then you cast corrosive armor for the damage reduction and for the damage. You cast the movability potion while you run into the enemy group. As you are into the enemy group, then you do the same thing as on the Nightblade Brawler build, where you do a light attack to benefit from the infused Berserker enchantment, and then you cast Eruption in order to proc Dark Conversions. You bar swap cast that to the front bar, and then you simply go ham with first a deep breath and then spam Carve two or three times. The deep breath will give you that Plague Break, as well as Carve by the way, and it will give you a nice bit of extra burst on top of the Master 2H with Brawler, and that's how that bomb functions. After you've done two or three brawler casts, usually the bomb is either over or everybody will have run away from the center of the dark conversions. And then there's no point into casting brawler again, so you want to try and disengage by healing or by running away using either protective plate or race against time. I'd say the benefits of this build are the tankiness overall, also outside of Corrosive, which allows Dragonite bombers to have an easier time playing in a group than, for example, Nightblade. This can be either in a small scale with some friends or less organized when just playing with your faction in a keep defense, for example. I'd say the main drawback is the lack of invisibility in this build. You can still sneak up on a group by using the immovability potions that can also give invisibility, but generally it's tough to move around when you're by yourself in an enemy keep, for example, and you might get spotted and killed before you're able to do anything in terms of bombing a repair group at the main gate. For that, it's much better to have a Nightblade, which can deal the same or higher damage anyway, but works a little less effective in groups for bombing and is a little less survivable in case you get spotted. Now, as I mentioned before, this build with Carve Bombing is not class-specific, so it's not just Nightblade and Dragonite that Carve Bombing can be used on. I do consider them to be the best classes for it, for maximizing damage though. Another really good class for this is the Arcanist, because the language I ultimate, mostly. That ultimate is also going to poke dark conversions and deals a large amount of burst. I'm not going to explain everything for this class in this guide though, because it's very similar to how I build the Nightblade and DK Carve Bombing builds, and I don't want to explain the same thing four times. For applying this on the Arcanist, I instead highly recommend watching the video on screen right now, which has a lot of nice Arcanist bombing clips and all the explanations in the description of the video. 
To put it simply though, I've choose the same sets and auxiliary stuff as on the Nightblade, so conversions and vicious death, and the skill setup similar to what you see in the video I linked. And then to end the video, I want to mention ranged bombing as well, which was really strong and especially a safe bombing build a year or so ago. Unfortunately though, it doesn't work that well anymore, and there are several reasons that play into that. For starters, there is less burst damage on that kind of build compared to the Carve Bombing especially. You just have Elemental Ring basically, and even if you cast Elemental Rage, it's going to take 2 seconds before it starts ticking. Secondly, people have also learned a bit more how to deal with Dark Conversions. And third, Dark Conversions is a bit buggy when you use it from elevation, so from, for example, on top of a Keep Tower or from a Rock. And I noticed it doesn't always pull enemies in, even if they don't block it. Some of these reasons I mentioned can be avoided by, for example, using the build on a Necromancer with Colossus, which I tried as well. This offers a lot more burst damage from range. People blocking conversions can also be an issue on Carve Bombing too, so that's not a problem unique to range bombing to this specific setup. But in my opinion, the reasons combined is why range bombing doesn't work that well anymore, even when I try to optimize it on, for example, a Necromancer. And I think this might explain why I haven't been able to pull this setup off Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention about bombing. I have gameplay videos about this as well, montages. I will link one as well here. There you can see more of these builds in action. So if you want to see that, stay tuned to this channel, maybe subscribe. But in general, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I also have a Patreon if you need more personal guidance or a personal build made for you. If you would check that out for supporting me or if you want some support yourself, I would greatly appreciate it. In any case, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.